We're joined now by USC head coach Andy Enfield. Coach, late night, early morning for you and your Trojans. We're grateful that you're joining us here this morning. Please provide an opening statement, and then we'll take some questions. Well, we're excited to be here. Our, play, our team played a very good basketball game last night against an outstanding Oregon team. Congratulations to Oregon and Coach Alban. They had a great year, and uh, I, I'm really proud of our players to be here. Uh, obviously, Gonzaga is undefeated and playing great basketball as well. So it uh, should be a great college basketball game tomorrow. We'll now take questions. Let's begin with Adam Grossbard of the Orange County Register. Adam, unmute your mic, state your name and media outlet for the benefit of those listening in and proceed with your question. Adam Grossbard, Orange County Register. A Andy, I'm just kind of curious the logistics of game planning between the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight. H how quickly did you start watching film after the game ended last night? How much is already prepared and how much needs to be done before the full film session with the players? Well, we got back to the hotel probably about 1 a.m. and looked at some video as a staff last night while we ate. Our players ate a quick meal. Tried to get to sleep before 2.30 or 3 a.m. I think I got to bed at 4 a.m. Uh, this is an early morning for us because uh, we haven't been able to prepare. We have practice here in about a half an hour. So uh, we'll do our best, uh, probably get together again this afternoon or evening. But it is a quick turnaround time, especially when you play the late game and your players get to bed at 3 in the morning. So we'll have to do our best to, to get rested, uh, take a nap this afternoon, and then uh, uh, be, be uh, ready to go on Tuesday night. Is Next there... question. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Adam, with a quick follow. Is there any team you've played this year that plays a similar style to Gonzaga? Uh, well, well, some of the teams in our league push the ball. Oregon really spreads you out, pushes the pace. And uh, I'm not sure. I, I really haven't seen enough video on Gonzaga to answer that question thoroughly. Next question is going to be from the Associated Press. Aaron Beard is ready to go. Hey, Andy, Aaron Beard with the AP. And I, I realize, like you said, you've had limited time to look at Gonzaga. But, you know, for all the attention that they get for their offense, their defense is top 10 in Ken Palm. They've got some size that allows them to, you know, get out on the wings a little bit. Um, is this one of those teams that maybe is a little bit overlooked defensively in that regard because of how good they are offensively? Uh, I, I don't know. You, you'd have to answer that question in the media. All I know is they're ranked number one in the nation, so if they're undefeated. I don't see how you're being overlooked. Uh, we just know they're an exceptional team on both ends of the floor. Coach, the next question is going to come from Zach Braziller of the New York Post. Um, Andy, uh, when, when you were thinking of hiring, um, you know, Eric Mobley, what, what kind of went into that decision and how much do you think that has helped you guys get to where you are now? We met Eric as a coaching staff when we started recruiting his boys, uh, Evan and Isaiah, when they were freshmen and sophomore in high school. And Eric was just such a, a very polite, a very engaging person, just, just a pleasure, pleasure to talk to. Uh, he, he was so nice to everybody, and it, it, I really was drawn to him because of his personality. He's just such a people person. And then I started talking to him about the game of basketball, and he told me his background, how he started youth groups with boys, coached boys and girls, uh, AAU, as, as well as local rec leagues. And, and I, I just thought that his, uh, the way he handled uh, player development, uh, the way he intera interacted with Young, uh, men, uh, young boys and girls, and, and also some of the older kids, uh, I was just so impressed. Uh, so the number one reason I thought of him as, as a potential staff member when, when we had an opening was who he is as a person. And I, I liked his background in basketball because he played in college, played overseas professionally, but he was a teacher. He taught basketball as a coach at, at, for, for boys and girls for many years. And I just loved the way he interacted with people. And, and so that was first and foremost. Uh, uh, and then... Uh, so as, as we got to know each other, I thought he'd be a great fit because we needed a big man coach. We needed someone to come in and help our program. And I thought we had enough experience on our staff with Coach, coach Capco and Coach Hart, who had been with me, that we, we could bring someone in that gave us a different perspective and some different teaching methods uh, that we didn't have. But also, uh, we knew he'd have a learning curve to become a college basketball coach because he had never done it at this level before. So 
our commitment to him was, hey, we'll help you. We're gonna, we're gonna, you have a third of the scouts. You're going to learn how to be a, an outstanding college basketball coach. At the same time, please, we, we need your expertise in certain areas and, and your personality. We, we, it's, uh, he energizes people, uh, and, and he really motivates them. So uh, that, that's what went into it. And uh, uh, three, years, three years later, he's been on our staff three years, he is now an outstanding basketball coach. I'm really proud of him um, as a head coach because – uh, like Leonard Hamilton took a chance on me. I'd never coached college, and um, and, and Eric has is, is, is just succeeded at the highest level, and, and we love him for that. And how did you know how much how significant do you think that hire was when you look at where this program is today? I mean, obviously his sons are such a big part of this team. Uh, well, I, I think uh, as a head coach, you have to hire assistant coaches that bring something different than, than you. And, and uh, I have a great staff. Jason Hart, my associate head coach, he should be a head coach now. He, he just, he's one of the best coaches in the country. Uh, Chris Capco, the same. He should be a head coach here any day now. Uh, th th they are so knowledgeable in their, their recruiting, their X's and O's, their player development. And then Eric joined us. And so, so the three of them together uh, make up a uh, tremendous coaching staff. And I'm only as good as my assistant coaches and, of course, my players. Uh, and then you throw Curtis Schultz, our strength coach in there, has been with us eight years. So we, uh, uh, we work together very closely. And uh, uh, Evan and Isaiah, of course, are his sons. Uh, but he, he coaches them like players, and, and, and we all do. And, and so the Mobley family is, is, is incredible. Uh, Nicole, mom, uh, she's an incredible person as well. So, so uh, uh, we're a big family at USC, and, and, and the Mobleys are part of that. Just a reminder for our reporters, we do have a limited amount of time, so if you have a follow-up, just jump back into the queue and we'll get to it as we can. Brian Hamilton's up next from The Athletic. Hey, Andy, Brian Hamilton from The Athletic. With this group, how comfortable are you switching defenses from one thing to another and back during the course of a game? Well, you need a basketball IQ, and I think our players have – developed a comfort level of switching defenses on the fly. I can call it mid-possession. I can go man or zone in mid-possession, and they can adjust quickly. They get to their spots. They understand that, hey, we have, to, we have to do this now and get back in transition and get to our – when you play zone, you have a particular spot in the zone that you have to play. So uh, I think this group has really grown into a cohesive defensive unit where uh, they can make the adjustments quickly. And then we switched – we switched last night. We switched up how we play the zone in, in different ways and different bumps and different uh, rotations, and, and they can do that now too. So it was a learning process for them. We haven't played a ton of zone all year, so we're, we're actually very impressed. Uh, our staff, we were, just, we were just talking about that yesterday, how, uh, how much they've uh, improved just in the last week by playing zone so much in the NCAA tournament. Let's go next to Ryan from the LA Times. Hey, Andy. Uh, Evan has only averaged 12 points a game through the tournament. You, you guys have still won the first three games by an average of 21-plus points. What does that say about the rest of this offense's performance? And, and against a team with so much offensive firepower like Gonzaga, do you feel like you'll need Evan to be more of a scoring factor? Well, we're scoring 80 points a game in a tournament, and he was our fourth leading scorer last night, had six assists against Kansas. He was our fifth leading scorer and had five assists. So as long as he keeps passing the ball, that's, he's so unselfish. So, uh, you know, Evan is not a, uh, he's not a guard. You can't give him the ball at the three-point line and just isolate him one-on-one. -on -one. He's not, he's not going to sh shoot threes off the dribble. Or he, He's a forward slash center, and he's very skilled with the ball. He's a great ball handler and a great passer, and he's very unselfish. But a lot of his finishes are in the lane, and he'll shoot the occasional three. Uh, so he puts a lot of pressure on the defense in areas that other guys can't. But at the same time, he's, he's not going to go and just – gets 20 shot attempts because that's not who he is a player. He, he gets double teamed a lot. Uh, so uh, I think you've seen all year the, the games that we've played really well. We have balanced scoring. We're 22 or 23 and 0 right now when three, three or more players score double figures. Last night we had four. I think the other night we had five. So I think we're 23 and 0, maybe 24 and 0 now when three or more players score double figures. And, and so we're a team. Uh, it's it's uh, Evan Mobley is a huge part of our team. But his skill level and his unselfishness uh, are really a big key for us because uh, the other guys, to have a team that's in the Elite Eight, you need balanced scoring and you need a balanced uh, team overall. Let's go to Shotgun Spratling from uscfootball.com. 
shotgunspratlangusc.com. Andy, outside the specific on-court skill sets that you were looking for in the grad transfer market, what are those three guys that you brought in? What did they add in? What were you kind of looking for, you know, outside of their specific skills? Well, we tried, we tried to get a quick background check on all of them to see if they fit our program. We have great, a great culture and great chemistry. We had a terrific team last year. We were 22-9 and nine last year on our way to the Pac-12 and then the NCAA tournament. We thought we could win games in the NCAA tournament last year. And, and so we had some success with two, a couple of grad transfers, and we knew we had to rebuild our entire roster this year because we had so many seniors, grad transfers. We had a couple of undergraduate transfers on Yekka left for the draft. So this was out of necessity that we had to quickly try to evaluate uh, these young men as people as well as basketball players because it's very important now uh, we've learned uh, that, that uh, you can only be a really great team at USC with our coaching staff if you're willing to buy in uh, on the court, in the classroom, and off the court. And I can't say enough about these guys. Uh, we got lucky. Uh, you, know, you, you never know sometimes when you recruit players, but the, the players we brought in this year, are, are they're dedicated to the sport, but they're also just incredible student athletes. And, and uh, we're very happy the way they've, uh, uh, even the, during this pandemic, this has really been a tough year. Uh, but, but they are, they've been a lot of fun to be around, and they're very mature, and they work extremely hard. Ryan Young up next from Trojansports.com. Uh, Andy, given that you haven't had much time to look at Gonzaga, what do you even prioritize in this practice this morning? Well, we won't go live. Let, let our guys rest. Uh, they just woke up here after about five or six hours of sleep. So uh, We'll try to get some shooting up, go over some basic concepts. We know Gonzaga is an extremely explosive offensive basketball team, so uh, we have to try to contain them the best we can. And then and, uh, Gonzaga, you have to be able to score the ball. Uh, you, you can't have the game in the 60s and expect to win. So we'll have to continue to uh, shoot the ball well and, and make that a point of emphasis in, in our practice. Let's take a question from Olivia Ray. Hi, Coach. I'm Olivia Ray out of Indianapolis here, and I wanted – to get your thoughts on maybe a thank you message or something you would tell all of the medical volunteers that have been inside the bubble with your team this last month? Uh, well, we, uh, we see them every day when we get COVID testing. There's also a lot of volunteers. I just met uh, uh, a nice uh, woman yesterday on my walk to the baseball stadium. Uh, that's the only time we get outside. Uh, uh, they, uh, they, their volunteers are in the bubble like we are, and I think she said she was. She's here through the Final Four, and hopefully we will be too. But uh, she was guaranteed, I think, 25 nights in a hotel. We're on day 20 ourselves because we we came from Las Vegas, so we were just talking about how hard it is uh, for the volunteers here, the medical staff, and and the facility volunteers. And so, uh, really, uh, uh, just so appreciative of what they're doing to, to give us a chance, all the teams here and, and, and the fans, uh, a chance to watch, Mar Ma watch March Madness and also participate for the teams. Thanks, Coach. Next question from Brenna Green, K-R-E-M. Hi, Coach. I'm Phil Brenna Green, Crumb 2 in Spokane. Um, you kind of touched on this a little bit, but uh, you guys essentially have a, a day and a half to prepare for this Gonzaga game. Um, just how difficult is it to prepare for a team like Gonzaga on, on that short of a turnaround? Well, it is challenging. As I said, uh, we had the late game last night, and the NCAA gave us the first practice this morning, so our players just got out of bed after a few hours sleep. So uh, this practice is just going to be shooting, and we'll have to worry about our um, – uh, game planning later because we haven't any time to prepare. Our final question, Coach, is going to come from Ryan with the LA Times once again. Hey, Andy, uh, you talked about your balance. Uh, obviously, Gonzaga has a similar balance. What's the key to just kind of slowing down an offense like that that can you know have any one guy go off at any moment? Uh, well, we've played a lot of good teams this year. As you see, three of our league is in the Elite Eight. And we just beat a fourth team, Oregon, last night that's exceptional. So uh, we've played a lot of good players this year and a lot of good teams. And uh, Gonzaga uh, is as good offensively as anyone in the country. And we understand that we have to defend at a high level uh, to give us a chance to win. Coach, we want to thank you for spending part of your morning with us here this morning. Good luck against Gonzaga tomorrow. Thank you. 
Next, we'll have Taj Edey, USC Trojan student athlete. If you have questions for Taj, put your hands up using that hand raise function in your Zoom interface. We'll get to as many questions as we can for Taj over the next 15 minutes. We're joined now by Taj Edey from the USC Trojans. Taj, how's it going this morning? Late night, early morning for you? Right, for sure. Uh, feeling, feeling good. Um, just looking to try and survive in advance. That's the name of the game. Let's take questions. Let's go to Aaron Beard from the Associated Press. Aaron. Hey, Aaron Beard with the AP. Uh, how are you balancing the fact that you guys have accomplished something that USC hasn't done in a long time in terms of getting to this point in the tournament, but yet you know, appreciating that, but yet trying to be ready to take on the challenge that's ahead and kind of keep building on it. Yeah, um, we feel like this is um, not uncharted territory. We feel like we've been making history all year, um, doing things that haven't been done in a long time, you know, starting early on in the season. So um, we're just trying to continue this momentum. Uh, we know we're playing a good team on Tuesday, but, you know, we're excited and we're, we'll, we'll be prepared. The next question is going to come from Brenna Green, K-R-E-M. Uh, you're uh, uh, Brenna Green, sorry, from Two Sports. Uh, Taj, you're uh, pretty familiar with this Gonzaga team, or at least with the program. Just what is it like uh, after playing at Santa Clara? Just what is it like uh, seeing them uh, again, especially on this stage? Yeah, um, you know, kind of in a position where we're excited to play anybody, um, we're prepared to play anybody. Um, but just the fact that it's Gonzaga, you know, obviously having that history, uh, being in the West Coast Conference. Um, it's exciting, you know, to have the opportunity to play them again. The next question is going to come from Ryan with the LA Times. Ryan, you're up next. Hey, Taj, Ryan, LA Times. Uh, this Gonzaga team, had, you know, has a, plays at a tempo that you guys haven't actually faced this season. How difficult is this team in transition, especially when you have a, a point guard like Jalen Suggs leading the way? Um, yeah, this is just, you know, a good overall team, um, you know, every position, you know, guys are capable of doing, you know, getting, you know, 20 points, you know, on any given night. So we just have to be extremely disciplined, um, make sure we take care of the ball and take good shots. Um, but yeah, they're dynamite in transition. So we have to make sure we're on top of our game with that. Adam Grossbard will get the next question. Adam's from the Orange County Register. Go ahead, Adam. Uh, Taj, last night when discussing their game plan, uh, Dana Altman said the plan was really just to try to take the Mobley side of the game and kind of live with the results. Uh, I guess what kind of message did you guys send about, you know, the balance of your offense with the way you performed last night? Yeah, uh, we're an extremely talented team, you know, at, at every position as well. Uh, we're extremely versatile. You know, we could do a lot of things, you know, on the basketball court, on the offense and defensive end. So. Um, we know what we're capable of. We don't really listen to the outside noise too much. Um, but, you know, we're excited to go and play. Shotgun Spratling represents USCfootball.com, and his question comes next. Uh, because you have a little bit of experience with Gonzaga, have the coaches come to you and asked you if you've got any tips or pointers on any individual players? Uh, no, not really. Um, you know, for the most part, this is, you know, essentially a new team, uh, except for maybe uh, Kispert. But, um, you know, we just kind of is going to do our due diligence, you know, as if I, you know, I never played them. So, you know, we're going to go at our personnel. We're going to, you know, do our job going at every individual and make sure, you know, we're locked in on our game plan. This is going to be a heavy personnel driven game. So, you know, we got to be locked in. The next question is going to be from Jim Meehan. Jim, could you please state your media outlet before you present your question? Yeah, Jim, Taj, Jim Mahan from the Spokesman Review. Yep, go ahead, Jim. Taj, Jim Mahan from the Spokesman Review in Spokane. Uh, you, you ran up against Gonzaga for three years. Uh, what did you take from those games uh, individually and as a team? Uh, I know you guys didn't have much success, but uh, uh, what did you take from those games as a team, and, and how nice is it maybe to face them with this current roster that you have? Yeah, um... You know, Gonzaga has been a good team, you know, for many years. Um, you know, they're 
a well-oiled machine. You know, they play as a team. Even though they have great individuals, they play, you know, great as a team. And they've been great in transition, you know, traditionally. So um, this this go round, you know, I'm excited. Um, I think, you know, we have a great opportunity. Taj, the next question is from Ryan Young of Trojansports.com. Hey, Taj, just kind of take us through the rest of your night last night. Uh, did you have time to decompress and sort through text messages and voicemails? And what time did you finally get to sleep? Uh, I went to sleep pretty late last night, uh, maybe around 2, 3 a.m. Once things kind of settled down, I got in the shower and just, you know, kind of relaxed a little bit. But, um, you know, this is what it is. It's March Madness. You know, it's been a crazy year all year um, due to COVID. So, you know, this is, you know, really no surprise. We're just going make to the, make the most of it. Taj, we'll take a question from Zach Braziller of the New York Post. Uh, Taj, what what has Evan meant to this team, and just has there been anything he's been able to do this year that surprised you? Um, I want to say necessarily that surprised me, um, because I got a feel even before I met him how um, humble and unselfish he was, but it just speaks volumes to what he's done, you know, throughout this year. It just speaks to his winning culture as an individual. Um, it's been games this year where he's only taken a couple of field goals and we still won by 20, 25 points. So, you know, he's just somebody who makes all the right plays, you know, regardless of what his stat line is or what he's expected to do. He just, he goes out and makes winning plays. Just like, you know, for example, last night, you know, he didn't have a whopping stat line, but he made, you know, winning plays that really stuck out. Shotgun Spratling with a follow-up up next. He's from uscfootball.com. Uh, so have there been any surprises at how well this team has come together with how diverse all the pieces are with grad transfers, regular transfers, freshmen, just all the pieces trying to come together this season? Um, not really any surprise. Um, I knew August 15th that this team was, you know, truly special. Um, that was the reason why, you know, I decided to come to USC. Um, I knew obviously we had Evan coming in. And then we had some good pieces, um, some grad transfers with experience. You know, I, I knew our freshmen were going to make that sophomore leap. Um, so I knew um, this team was going to be something special. Uh, I was surprised when we were um, picked to finish sixth in the conference. But I knew, you know, we all spoke about it. We knew that, you know, this team was special. Taj, we'll hit a final up question from Ryan of the LA Times. Hey, Taj, you guys have the best two-point field goal percentage defense in the nation, but this Gonzaga team has the best two-point uh, field goal percentage on offense in history right now. What are they so good at in terms of scoring inside the arc? Yeah, I think it really speaks to um, their transition game. Um, they really, you know, they really push the pace, you know, on makes and misses. And that allows them to, you know, get in the paint early on in offense, which allows them to kick it off with threes. Um, so we really have to just be sharp in terms of, you know, taking good shots, um, taking care of the ball and make sure we're getting back on defense. I think, you know, we get them in the half court, you know, it'll be a good game. We do have another minute or two if there are any further questions for Taj Edie from USC. Shotgun Spratling, one more for you. As you said, you knew on August 15th that this team was truly special. What, what is it about that date? Um, not necessarily a specific date, but just, you know, when uh, our roster was finalized and we kind of got together as a, as a ball club and I saw, you know, our length, um, I, I knew our skill set, um, our versatility. I just knew that there weren't going to be too many teams like us. You know, one of the uh, tallest, longest teams in the country, uh, if not the longest team. So. Um, I knew that we had a great chance to do something special if we, you know, we put it together and we play as a team. Olivia Ray is next from WISH in Indianapolis. Curious what the, uh, the tracing chips are like. We've seen some TikTok videos of, of you guys wearing them. How is that? Um, yeah, that doesn't sound like Olivia. Olivia, uh, which just please state your name and your media outlet. Sorry, just I'm, so I'm, uh, I'm Olivia's co worker, Charlie Clifford, Wish TV. Yeah, uh, yeah, we've been wearing uh, those chips for you know a while now, even before you know we came to the Pac 12 tournament to here in March Madness. Um, it was a little bit of an adjustment. Um, we have to wear certain uh, compression shorts where we could kind of stick it, you know, have little pockets on it, or some guys, you know, they put it in their socks. 
Um, it was a little bit of an adjustment, you know, the first couple of times we wore it because, you know, it was just weird having that big, big chip on your on your person. But um, we've, we've adjusted to it. Uh, we understand. Like I said, this year has just been crazy in so many different facets. So, you know, we kind of just embrace it. You know, we understand what it is. So we just, you know, we kind of take it from there. And Brenna Green from KREM with our final question. Brenna Green from Tattoo. Um, you guys basically have a day and a half to prepare for this Gonzaga team. Just, just how much of a lift is that, you know, with a team that has as much offensive firepower as they do? Um, you know, it kind of just, you know, the circumstances. Uh, it's March Madness. You know, there's always going to be a quick turnaround. Um, but, you know, we had a long film session this morning. Um, we'll continue to watch film, um, you know, throughout the day today. And then, you know, tomorrow morning and to the afternoon before the game. So we feel like we have ample time to, you know, do our due diligence and make sure we're disciplined in our scouting reports and knowing guys' strengths and weaknesses and things like that. So I think we'll be just fine. On behalf of all the media and attendance, we want to thank Taj Edie for joining us here this morning. Taj, best of luck against Gonzaga tomorrow night. Fight on.